Hi guys, this is your all doomsday chef, Pimbone, uh, here on this dreary Friday afternoon, September 16, 2016. So anyway, today we're going to, I guess, step out of doomsday mode, and your all doomsday chef is going to teach you how to make an absolutely delicious blackberry cobbler and this is the quick cobbler the quick southern cobbler taught to me by none other than julia may robertson taught me how to do this uh when i was about eight years old so i've been cooking these things going on 50 years and even an eight-year-old can do this i mean it, it is hard to screw this one up guys uh, if I can do this, anybody can do this. And I assure you that this is every bit as delicious as any cobbler you have ever eaten and any clueless moron can do this. So, of course, the most important thing, now I'm, we're making a blackberry cobbler, which is my personal favorite. You can do this with, with pretty much any fruit. But uh, amazingly, I actually found some uh, fresh blackberries today. You know, the, the blackberry crop on the coast of California has been completely hammered this year in 2016, which is being blamed on climate change. Imagine that, but miraculously, look at that, guys. Oh, my God. So what you want to do is you want to aim for a quart of fresh picked blackberries. I actually got a, I probably got a going on a quart and a half, but uh, I'm going to be greedy. I think the pan will hold it. So if you're using a quart of blackberries, what you want to go for is a, uh, is one of these deep dish nine by 13. A 9 by 13 should work pretty well for this. Okay, your total ingredient list, other than your blackberries or your blueberries or your strawberries or your apples or your cherries, whatever, you need about a quart of fruit. You need flour, some good old pure cane sugar, some baking powder, and salt. Amazing. Oh, and, and a stick of butter. So, berries, flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, and butter. And that's it. And so here is how you grease your pan. Uh, again, for a, nine and a, for a 9 by 13, a stick of butter works absolutely is just the right amount. Obviously, if you have fewer berries in a smaller pan, you might want to pull back on the butter or you're going to make yourself a big greasy mess. Now, I'm going to attempt to do this uh, pretty much with one hand. It would be real nice to have someone else filming this. Oh yeah, now the other thing is you want to preheat your oven. I don't know, I found 350 just isn't quite enough to get it brown on top. You know, I like my all nice and chewy. So I set it on about 365, but anywhere between 350 and 400. So what you need to do is take your stick of butter, which unfortunately is almost frozen, and melt it. All right. Oh boy, we're probably going to set off the smoke alarm with this. So you, uh, so you melt your stick of butter while that is melting. I might have got that pan a little too hot. I hope I'm not burning my butter. You take your little glass mixing bowl here. And it's pretty easy. Can I guess that's my oven has been preheated. It's roughly for, again, for a, a 9 by 13 and a quarter berries and a stick of butter. It's pretty much, wow. See if you can handle this. One cup of flour and one cup of of sugar. Okay, we're gonna get us a cup of flour. 
And you might not want to put quite a cup of sugar. You know, it depends on partly how sweet your blackberries are. Uh, but you put in your cup of flour. And I don't know, maybe a half teaspoon of salt. There's just some Himalayan pink salt going in here. Uh, all right, about a half teaspoon of bacon powder. I don't know where the measuring spoons are in this house. So we're just going to sprinkle what, I don't know. Was that a half teaspoon or not? I don't know how fresh this bacon powder is. I made my uh, wedding cake, my own wedding cake, which should have been the first sign of my marriage. And don't ever get the groom to make the wedding cake. I left the baking powder out of the three-tiered wedding cake. Oh, well, I hope I've got a half a teaspoon of this ancient baking powder. Yeah. It's always nice to have fresh ingredients. Oh well. It is what it is, guys. Uh, is my butter melted? Not quite. Come on, butter. Get melted. Alright, let's do a little sifting here. We actually have a little sifter. Okay, we mix up our, pow our flour, baking powder, and salt and then as I say uh, got a cup of sugar this is as I say this is real a real brain teaser guys so uh, there you go I hope this isn't a two cup thing this feels pretty big for a cup anyway I think the pan can handle it. <laughs> All right, so mix up your dry ingredients. So now you've got your flour, your sugar, your salt, and your baking powder. Now what you're aiming for, oh, the other ingredient, I'm sorry, I forgot a major ingredient, is milk. So what you're aiming for is like a is roughly a lot like a thick pancake batter so uh, don't you know be careful it's all it's a lot easier to to add more milk so I start maybe with a cup of flour I, you know I'm I'm going about two-thirds of a cup of milk and you can always add so as I say this is oh shit I'm, I've already put too much milk in. Anyway, as I say, what you're aiming for is like a thick pancake batter. Now, this recipe does not call for eggs. I've often been tempted to put an egg in uh, this because I think it might make a, a, a crustier finish to your... But anyway, it doesn't call for an egg, and it does just fine without one, so I'm going to resist temptation again. It's a good thing I didn't put any more milk. So, you see what, I'm, what I've got here, guys. Uh, so, let's call it, a, for a cup of flour, let's call it two-thirds of a cup of milk. I'm afraid I burned my butter a little bit. hope this isn't going to be too... Much of a problem. So here is the here is the big secret. This is how you you grease your pan. You have your melted stick of butter, and you just pour the butter out into the pan. It really helps if the butter if the pan is on a level surface that you're not in a 100 year old farmhouse because you really need. The little dog is getting very excited about the smell of this butter. Uh, so you, you really want the butter to, uh, it, it's got to distribute evenly over the pan. The, the cooktop of the stove seems a little, a little better. 
All right. Yes, the little dog is is on a major wiggle. He goes, I'm ready for some of this cobbler. Bop. Now you're going to have to wait a long time for the actual cobbler. Okay, so now, hopefully, you have your butter evenly distributed in your pan. <clears throat> I better work quick. I'm going to have to set down the this camera, guys, because the butter keeps wanting to... Uh, but I need to have the camera. i got to raise this up. We're going to use the cap of the... Okay, that does it. So what you do, here is the big secret. You take your, your pancake batter mix. Now, of course, the butter's going too much in the other direction. You, do, you just can't win. Uh, but you take your... You, you, you take the, quote, pancake mix, you take your batter, and you just pour it into the middle of the butter. Are you following me? And uh, if you have a level surface, what, what you're trying, the, uh, the object you're trying for is to get a ring of butter all around the batter. So this batter should be sitting, and particularly in the corners, you want these corners uh, to be nice and buttery. I'm going to have to set down the camera for just a minute while I get the rest of my goodies out of here. And then I will let the little dog, I will let the little dog lick the bowl. All right. So you get all your batter into the center of your butter, batter in the butter, and if you have a little dog, this is the point, you can get the little dog the bowl to lick. That's all right. Okay, so now what you should have, your pan should look like this, and then you just take the berries, and you do just what you did with the batter, and you just dump them into the middle. Good God, I might have two quarts of berries in here. I'm going to have one big ass cobbler. Look at that. Oh my God. Mm. So, the hope, the object, the goal, whatever you want to call it, of this is, is the physics of this, uh, of this quick cobbler, this deep dish cobbler, is assuming your baking powder is not 20 years old like this baking powder probably is. Your hope is that as it cooks, the, the, the flour is going to rise up and just roll over the blackberries and these nice buttery edges are going to roll up. It's almost, almost like a calzone. You can imagine that. I got a little bit of sugar left. And, and so what I do is uh, just sprinkle some sugar. And you, what you really, what's really important is these corners, is the four corners to uh, those nice buttery corners and those edges. You really want to get some sugar sprinkled on your corners because you want it to be nice and chewy and caramelized. Oh my God, the corners are the uh, are the best part. Let me just go ahead and well, I didn't realize I had this much sugar left in here. Good enough. All right. So there you have it, guys. And uh, so we're gonna put this in the oven. It's preheated to 365. Uh. It's probably going to take for a cobbler this size probably 45 minutes, even an hour. Uh, I would check in after 30 minutes. So pop it in at 365. So guys, I am way too much of a Luddite to know how to do this all in one video. Oh man, so there she goes, 
into the oven. And as I say, I'm going to come back in 30 minutes. Now, I am way too much of a Luddite to know how to put the final product in this video. So, once this baby comes out of the oven, I will bring you part two and uh, this video to see what absolutely delicious mess we made and we're really hoping the uh we're really hoping the uh bacon powder is gonna work with me here anyway i will be back at you probably in about 45 minutes to an hour mm. bye guys